السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We always have to ask twice to get things done in this day and age Alhamdulillah But Jazakallah khair for your response Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu bihi wa nasta'khfiruhu wa nasta'hdih Wa na'udhu billahi ta'ala min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyaati a'malina Ma yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lahu wa ma yudlil fala hadiya lah Ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna sayyidana wa habibana wa uswatana wa qaidana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa tayyibin wa tahirin wa ashabihi ajma'in Wa ala kulli man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilma Subhanak Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim wa ba'd There's a hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is in the Sahih of Imam Muslim and the Sunan of Abi Dawood. And there's actually a few different versions of this hadith. So I'm not going to specifically focus on one version, but I'm going to mention all of the versions together. In, it, it will seem as though it's one hadith, but it's not one hadith. You won't find them ex- exactly this hadith in this way that I'm going to relate it to you. But they're all related in different ner- in hadith collections. So you'll find a portion of it in Sunan Abi Dawood, a portion of it in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith, famous hadith, it's a sahih authenticated, rigorously authenticated hadith. He said, Al-Muslimu akhu al-Muslim. A believer is a brother of a believer. Which also includes sister. A believing woman is a sister of a believing woman. And likewise, brother and sister. There's brotherhood and sisterhood. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, La yadlimuhu. And the consequence and the result of this brotherhood and sisterhood, what is a sign, what is the alama, what is the indication that there is brotherhood and it's not just mere lip service, it's not that we are all brothers and we just say it, we are indeed really brothers and sisters. What is the sign and indication for that? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, he says, لا يظلمه, he does not oppress him. And then he says, not just he does not oppress him, وَلَا يُسَلِّمُهُ He doesn't abandon him, he just doesn't leave him being oppressed or doesn't abandon, abandon his fellow brother or sister suffering. And then he says the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مَنْ نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ or مَنْ فَرَّجَ in another riwayah عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا كَرَّبَ اللَّهُ فَرَّجَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Whoever alleviates a fellow Muslim brother or sister from the hardships and sufferings and difficulties of this life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will alleviate that person from the hardships of the next life. And then he said, وَمَنْ يَسَّرَ عَلَى مُعْصِرٍ Whoever makes ease on someone in difficulty and hardship. يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah will create ease for that person in the next life. Whoever creates ease for someone in this life, Allah will create ease for that person in the next life. And then he says, وَمَنْ كَانَ فِي حَاجَةِ أَخِيهِ كَانَ اللَّهُ فِي حَاجَتِهِ Whoever is in the, whoever's there always in assistance, in fulfilling the needs of his fellow Muslim brother or sister, Allah remains in that person's assistance and help. And in another riwayah he said, وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِيهِ Allah is always in the assistance and help of his slave, as long as that slave is in the assistance and help of his fellow Muslim brother or sister. And then he said, وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَ اللَّهُ عُيُوبَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Whoever hides and conceals and covers the faults of a fellow Muslim, Allah will conceal the, and uh, hide and cover the sins of this person in the next life. And then the hadith goes on to mention some other things. Now this hadith is actually very important. There's a few things mentioned by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Brotherhood, sisterhood, we all know. We all talk about it. We are all Muslim brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, the Quran says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً But there are signs and indications. We don't just become brothers and sisters just because we say it verbally and it's a mere lip, lip service. We have to, we, myself and all of you, we all have to actually prove it that we are actually, con- we consider ourselves to be brothers and sisters. This does not only, it's not restricted or limited. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has mentioned many things here. 
Brotherhood, sisterhood is not restricted to any race, any color, any ethnicity, any background. It's not only we are only helping and supporting our fellow. If, we are, if I'm a Palestinian, then I will only support the cause of the Palestinians. If I'm an Indian, then only for the Indians. If I'm a Bangladeshi, then only for the Bangladeshis. If I'm an Arab, then only for the Arabs. This goes beyond race, language, ethnicity. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Muslimu, Al-Mu'minu, Akhul Mu'min. There's brotherhood. Iman and Islam is a far greater uh, connection and relationship which goes beyond any other you know, reason of connection. So this is something that we really need to focus on. That we, we are all brothers and sisters. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يظلمه. What is the sign that we are brothers and sisters? What is the sign? You don't oppress. This oppression, this indicates and tells us one thing that it is not enough for a Muslim to it is not enough for a Muslim for, to well there's two things mentioned here he does not oppress him and he doesn't leave him abandoned so the first point is that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that one of the first signs of brotherhood and sisterhood is that we do not oppress one another we don't oppress one another not just we can talk about those widows and orphans um, suffering in Bangladesh and all those suffering in Palestine and Syria and elsewhere. But if I am oppressing you, you are oppressing me in any way, shape or form. I owe you money and I'm not giving you money. That's oppression. It's haram. It doesn't matter how much we talk about Palestine and Bangladesh. There's hadith. You know this, the final sermon of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in Hajjatul Wada. You know what he said? He said, Many, of the, many things he mentioned, and one of them he said, Ayyuhan nas, O people, Innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. Indeed, remember, beware, believers are brothers. And then he said, Fala yahillu malum ri'in. That is, it's not permissible. Malu akhihi, la yahillu lim ri'in malu akhihi illa antibi nafsin. Because of this brotherhood, it is not halal for any Muslim to consume the wealth of another Muslim unless it's with the contentment of that other person's heart. This is the consequence, this is the result of brotherhood. This is what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the final sermon, khutbah. So, la yadlimuhu. The first indication, first sign of brotherhood is that you don't oppress your fellow Muslim brother. We must avoid oppression. It will come in a form of darkness on the day of judgment. It starts at home. We don't oppress our families. We don't oppress our spouses. We don't oppress our children. We don't oppress our family members, our relatives, our, our co-workers. We don't oppress people in the masjid. We don't oppress our you know, people in our local community. Oppression is haram. فَلَا تَظَالَمُوا The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam relates in a hadith al-Qudsi when he relates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَا عِبَادِ إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ ظُلْمَ عَلَى نَفْسِي O oh, oh my servants, I have, I have forbidden, prohibited oppression on my own self. Allah is saying, فَلَا تَظَالَمُوا So do not oppress one another. So the first sign of brotherhood is that we don't oppress one another. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam says وَلَا يُسَلِّمُهُ the second sign of brotherhood that we are really truly brothers and sisters, you know what the second sign is? That we don't abandon our fellow Muslim brother or sister. It is not sufficient. It is not sufficient to just not harm or oppress. Of course, that is the major haram, to oppress someone or to harm someone. In any way, shape or form, verbally, physically, psychologically, emotionally. But it doesn't stop there. We, it's a duty of a Muslim the first step is to not make someone suffer. And the second step, and also an obligation, and also a duty, and also a responsibility, is to help and come to the need and help and assist a fellow Muslim brother or sister who is suffering, who is in hardship, who is in difficulty. And not just Muslims, this goes beyond, it's for humanity really. You are driving on, on the motorway, right? You are driving, or you're driving in London. And you see someone just had an accident. Someone just, you know, someone got run over. Yeah, you'll have 10 cars just driving past. Who cares? That's his problem, not my problem. This goes beyond even being a Muslim. This is humanity. Someone who has basic humanity in his or her life will stop and ask, do you need some help? Do you need some assistance? This is, this is something that we should have in our hearts. 
You don't abandon, you don't leave anyone suffering. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned that any hardship that we alleviate from any human being on planet earth, in the hadith, mu'min, specifically Muslims, Allah will remove the hardships of the next life. We are in the help and assistance. As long as we help and assist our fellow brothers and sisters, Allah remains in our help and in our assistance. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa also mentioned in the hadith, whoever yassara ala mu'sirin, whoever makes ease for a believer, for a, for a fellow Muslim brother or sister who is in difficulty, hardship, usra, you know, inna ma'al usri yusra, same words used. Whoever yassara ala mu'sir, whoever makes taysir, yusra, ease on someone on usra. You know this in the Quran, you know what it's coming reference to? Making ease. وَإِن كَانَ ذُو عُسْرَةٍ فَنَظِرَةٌ إِلَى مَيْسَرَةٍ When someone takes a loan from you, and the, and the time has come to repay that loan, and you find that he is in ذُو عُسْرَةٍ He's finding it difficult to pay you back. The Quran says, فَنَظِرَةٌ إِلَى مَيْسَرَةٍ Give him ease, respite. It's okay brother, next week, it's okay. This is also part of يَسْتَيْسِيرْ عَلَى الْمُعْسِرِ There's a hadith in Bukhari, that there was a man, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that there was a man who was presented before Allah. The meaning of these kind of hadith that a man presented before Allah, meaning that he will be presented and a sample was shown to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa He will come before Allah. Allah will ask the angels, وَهُوْ عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ Allah knows the unseen, but just to show everybody. Look in his account. Does he have anything? The angel will say, Oh Allah, nothing. No prayer, no salah, no fasting, no zakat, no hajj, no good deeds, nothing. But only one thing. This guy used to be a businessman. And what he told his workers, قَالَ لِفِتْيَانِهِ That whenever you find someone who comes to buy goods from you, take it easy. Be gentle. Make it easy for people. Give them credit. Give them loans. If somebody can't pay them off, forgive them. Because of that, فَتَجَاوَزَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ This is in Bukhari. Allah forgave all his sins and entered him in paradise. That's the only... Remember, this is like... This is not only... It doesn't mean... This does not mean... Yes? These kind of hadiths don't mean that... Okay, from now on, no salah, nothing. You know what? I'm just going to do a business and just forgive everybody and I'll be entering Jannah. We have to understand all these hadiths in their proper context. This, this is the fadl of Allah. There's a law. Allah places a law. If you don't offer salah, this will happen. But sometimes Allah comes out from the law and you know like sometimes just out of His mercy. But it's not the norm. So anyway, there's numerous hadiths that talk about assisting and helping. But I'd like to say one thing here. This only comes about, brothers and sisters, and this is what we need to create in our hearts, in our lives. This only comes about if we inculcate in our lives the love and mercy and compassion for the creation of Allah. It's an obligation. Love, compassion and mercy for the creation of Allah. This only comes if we have this. This is what we need to inculcate. Allah is what? Where is Allah? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He sent the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, as what? Merciful. Rahmatul lil alameen. He is the merciful, he is the most merciful, he is merciful to al alameen. If you look in the commentary of al alameen, lengthy explanations given by the ulama. He is merciful to what? Allah didn't say, Lil insan or lil mu'mineen or lil muslimin or lil this or lil that. No. Lil alameen, plural of alam. All types of worlds, which includes this world and everything within it. And all the different. He is merciful for the different planets, for the sun, for the stars, for Jupiter, from, for Mars. Yeah? You've been to Mars, anybody here? No, soon inshallah. Mars and Jupiter, and the jinn kind and the mankind and the angels and the believers and the non-believers and the orphans and the widows and the children and the animals and everyone, birds. There's books written on this topic. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a mercy. He actually says himself. There's a hadith, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, you know what he says? 
كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسمي لنا نفسه أسماء. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم would he would count list his names to us to us companions. He would say أنا محمد. My name is Muhammad. وأنا أحمد. My name is Ahmed. وأنا المقفي. I am the last and the final prophet. وأنا نبي التوبة. I am the prophet of repentance. وأنا نبي الرحمة. I am the prophet of mercy. In the hadith of Tabarani, إنما أنا رحمة مهداة. I am the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says, I am a mercy gifted to you. I am what? A mercy gifted to you. You know when something's given in gift, you have two parties. And you have the gift. So here the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa the gift, the, you know, the, the mawhub, the gift. We are the recipients of the gift. And who's giving us the gift? Who's giving us the gift? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here some sisters saying, Allah, the brothers, I know you've had a long day and it's been hot, alhamdulillah. And London, you know, it's always... Anyway, um, Allah is the giver of the gift. He gave us the gift. Gift for who? For humanity at large. For the believers. Because the Messenger وسلم, guided us. He directed us. Showed us the Sarat al Mustaqim. He guided us towards the straight path. He informed us about what is good and what is bad. And He had our concern in His heart all the time. Even for the disbelievers, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a source of mercy because he wanted them to be guided as well. Allah says, "You are going to destroy yourself because you are so eager that they should embrace Islam and so that they have a better next life." When he was pelted with stones, he made a dua: "Allahumma hadi qawmi fa innahum la yaglamun." He never even had hatred those who oppressed him, so he was merciful. One of the manifestations the ulama say that Allah prevented, you know in the previous nations, those who disobeyed Allah and who rebelled against Allah, there used to be general punishment. In this ummah, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah says, Allah will never give a general punishment to this ummah, people in this, of this time, after the Messenger wasallam, because of the barakah and because of the mercy of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he is a mercy for the believers, for the disbelievers, for the munafiqeen, for the hypocrites as well. He's a source of mercy because he never, despite knowing the hypocrites, he never exposed them. He never exposed them. He still wanted them to become believers. He was mercy to his family. Numerous narrations of his merciful nature. Numerous, that's not our topic, but how he was merciful to his family. Right? This is what we need to bring. Rahmah, mercy in our hearts, compassion. It's t- we need to be compassionate towards all these different categories. Right? Also, children. Merciful towards children. There is a companion, there was once somebody called Aqra bin Habis. Imam Muslim narrates this hadith in his Sahih. Aqra bin Habis came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, he saw the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam kissing his grandson, Hassan and grandsons, Hassan and Hussein. وَعِنْدَهُ Hassan wa Hussein. So he said, إِنَّ لِي عَشْرَةً مِثْلَ هَاوْلَىٰ مَا قَبَّلْتُ وَاحِدًا مِنْهُمْ أَحَدٍ Oh Messenger of Allah, I have ten of these. How many do I have? Ten, just one left for a football team. Or maybe four left, including the substitutes. I have ten of these. I've never kissed one ever in my life. You know the word the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said? Man la yarham la yurham. The one who doesn't show mercy and compassion will not be shown mercy and compassion in the next life by Allah. And this is why the famous hadith of Sunan of Imam Abu, Abu Dawood. This is known as hadith al-musalsal bil awaliyah. You know, historically since the time of Abdullah ibn Mubarak, the tabi'i, Till today, when scholars teach students, when muhaddithun, scholars of hadith, teach their students hadith, when they begin the first hadith that they teach, this is like the continuation in the hadith being the first one. Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhum ar-Rahman wa tabaraka wa ta'ala irhamu man fil ard yarhamkum man fil sama Those who are merciful, yarhamuhum ar-Rahman wa tabaraka wa ta'ala the most high, 
is merciful unto them. Therefore, have mercy to the people of the world, of earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy unto you. If we want the mercy of Allah, Allah is saying, be merciful and compassionate towards your fellow creation. So this is something we need to create in our lives, brothers and sisters. Without that, without to, to finish that off, so this was with children, even with orphans and widows. Once somebody came and complained to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I have a very hard heart. I'm very harsh hearted. You know some people just can't cry. I'm just very harsh. What can I do? What shall I do? Give me some wadifa. Yeah, today will be some, give me some wadifa. Give me, tell me, read something. Miraculously something will happen. You know, this is another problem in our community. We think like every problem will be sorted out with a, you know, some kind of super miraculous wadifa or some kind of potion that we just drink and overnight we are transformed. It doesn't work like that, brothers and sisters. Anyway, so the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, you know one of the remedies is, always keep on passing your head over the, uh, passing your hand over the head of an orphan. Do masah on the head of the orphan. Always when you see an orphan. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa would stop when he would see children. He was the one who would greet them first. Not wait for them to greet him. He was the first who would greet them. Kana yazuru al-ansar. He would go to the tribe of Ansar. Yusallimu ala sibyanihim. He would say salam to the children and he would wipe the heads. He would, he would you know, place his hands on the heads out of shafaqa and out of mercy and out of rahmah and out of compassion. Even with orphans. And so many narrations. He, this was his you know, um, practice. And verbally he mentioned many things about children and orphans. Especially about orphans. What did he say? أنا وكافل اليتيم هكذا أنا وحافل و أنا وكافل اليتيم هكذا في الجنة I and the one who looks after an orphan will be like this on the day of judgment in Jannah. He said يوم القيامة on the day of judgment. And he وأشار إلى السبابة والوسطى. He gestured with these two fingers, the index finger and the middle finger. He said in another hadith, "Ana wa imra'atun safa'a al khadaini kahatain." I and the woman with dark brown, you know, cheeks will be together, the same two fingers, in Jannah. You know what that safa'a al khadain refers to? This refers to a woman who is a widow who spent her life after the death of her husband despite in another riwayah that a hasbin wa jamal despite being you know attractive and having a position and despite being in a position to remarry she is sacrificed and remember one thing before going on there's nothing wrong to marry as well because this is a taboo in the society sometimes you can't this comes from cultural it comes from hindus that after your husband passes away you can't marry ever there's nothing like that in islam all the wives bar one of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam were all previously married and they married him so but this is just one aspect somebody who had a right to remarry but for the sake of her children because she wanted to look after her children and she thought that if she would get if she would marry then they would you know her marriage would get in the way of the tarbiyah of her children this widow the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i and this widow will be together on the day of judgment and this also indicates you know the the dark or the brown kind of cheeks this refers to not to the color but it's like out of really hardship and it's like she's not adorned herself the scholars of hadith explain that this actually one of the things it indicates is that this woman because she's got no husband hence she's not adorning herself therefore sisters adornment is only for your husband if you don't have a husband there's no need to adorn because who's there to adorn yourself yeah remain clean but adornment so this also indicates pre-marriage or you know when a woman is widow there's no need for adornment tazeen but anyway he mentioned many virtues of looking after the orphans, looking after the widows, looking after children. This is the rahmah of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His rahmah with, with animals. There was one, there was one um, person who 
laid an animal on the ground and he was sharpening his knife. You know? So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and looked at him and he said, Aturidu an tumitaha mawtatayn? Do you want to give this animal two deaths? Do you want to give it two deaths? By looking at your knife, the animal has already died, one death. You know, some of us, we don't even realize, we don't have that heart to realize. Seriously, if you go and see in a slaughterhouse, I've been to a slaughterhouse, I've visited many. If you see the, ch- the animals, the chicken that are being slaughtered and they know it's their turn next, seriously, just look at the face of the animal. Look at it, seriously. I actually just really kept it looking for about 2-3 minutes. They are, they are creatures with hearts and souls. Frightened, terrified. Then my turn is next. And that's why it's actually makru tahreem. Prohibitively disliked to slaughter one animal in the presence of another one. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Inna Allah katab al-ihsan ala kulli shay. Fa'idha qataltum fa'ahsinu al-qitla. Wa'idha dhabahtum fa'ahsinu dhibha. Allah has made obligatory perfection and excellence on everything. When you, slo- when you kill, kill well. When you slaughter, slaughter well. Wal yuhidda ahadukum shifratahu. Let one of you sharpen the knife. Don't make, make sure your, your knife is not, you know, it's sharp. So it's very swift. And give ease to the animal that you're slaughtering, even harming animals. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ فِي هَذِهِ الْبَهَائِمِ Fear Allah regarding these animals. When you sit on them, when you, when you um, mount them, mount them in an easy way. You know, don't oppress even the animals. So he was rah- merciful, he had a rahmah towards believers, non-believers, hypocrites, Children, women, men, animals, rahmatan lil alameen. And that's what we need to include. This, we will not, we will never, nothing will touch us, nothing will affect us. The suffering that takes place throughout the world, unless we bring, we inculcate in ourselves, in our lives, this quality and attribute of having compassion towards the creation of Allah. And you know why that is important? Do you know why it's important? There's a hadith. I can't recall the reference, but it's a sound hadith. Yeah, if somebody wants reference, I can find it later on. Because I just remembered it right now. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-khalqu iyalullah Fa'ahabbu al-khalqi ila Allahi man ahsana ila iyalihi The whole of creation is the family of Allah. The whole of creation is what? The family of Allah. Therefore, the most beloved to Allah is the one who is the best towards his family. If I have a family and I have people doing good to my family, won't that person become more beloved to me? And why is the whole of creation the family of Allah? The reason is, is because Allah created this humanity and his creation. If I make something, if you make something, even if you make a small stone, yeah? Something that we manufactured, you know, you, you make a car, this is, this is, I've, you know, someone who made this. MashaAllah, beautiful. Looks really nice. Okay? If someone comes and kicks this, and don't do that, the one who made this, what's going to happen to their heart? It's going to feel bad, it's going to suffer. It's going to feel sad. So much, you know, I put in this. Allah doesn't have to put so much. Allah is kun fa of course. But, if someone treated this well, someone praised it, someone was good to this, item, that person becomes beloved to us. Any small item that we make, the creation is the manufacturing, you know, this is manufactured by Allah. Allah created creation, men, women, Muslim, non-Muslim, humanity, animal, everyone. And this is why when we are good to something that Allah created, we become beloved to Allah. Because it's got a connection, it has a relationship. It has a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, st- you heard the story of Layla and Majnoon? Yeah, everyone has, has heard the story of Layla and Majnoon. You know, these stories, we like them. Yeah? Majnoon was Majnoon. His name wasn't Majnoon, right? People think his name was Majnoon. Somebody asked me, can I keep my name Majnoon? <laughs> a few weeks ago. He said, is it okay to keep a name Majnoon? <laughs> Subhanallah. He said, what? I said to him, why? He said, because I'm like a Majnoon for my wife. So I want to, be, you know, I want, you know, uh, my son's name to be Majnoon. But anyway, um, 
Majnoon was he was insane in his craziness of his love for his Layla. Layla wasn't even her name. Layla, normally in the Arabic language, Layla is nowadays used as a name for females, actually a good, very good name, you know. Um, but that name in the Arabic language it's used for a beloved. So anyway, Majnoon was crazily in love with Layla. And what did he used to do? He used to and Layla didn't want him. Yeah, if you don't, if someone doesn't want you, brothers and sisters, just say salamu alaikum and move on. Okay, that's another story. If someone doesn't want you, whether you're already married, of course you try. But if someone is, you know, just adamant of not wanting you, you know, why, why persevere? Move on. There's, you know, like they say, plenty more fish in the pond. Anyway, um, so this Layla didn't want him. He used to make tawaf and go around the, the, you know, the city. Remember in the olden times, the city used to have walls. The city used to have walls. You know, it's not like cities and villages now. In the olden times, a city used to be, the border used to be walls. And there used to be gates and doors. Yeah, if you so know. he used to go and kiss those walls. And he said the poetry, Amurru ala diyari diyari layla Uqabbilu dal jidari wa dal jidara Wama hubbu diyari shagafna qalbi Walakin hubbu man sakana diyara I kiss the walls of the village or the city of Layla. I go around, I make tawaf, I circulate, and I kiss the, the walls. And وَمَا حُبُّ دِيَارِ شَغَفْنَا قَلْبِي These walls are not what really attracts me. I'm not in love with these walls, they're just walls. But it's the love of the one who dwells inside of the walls. If something is connected to someone who you love, even that connected item thing becomes beloved to you. If Allah says that this is my creation, humanity is connected to Allah. It's the creation of Allah. Al makhluqu al khalqu ayalullah. Then if we really truly love Allah, then we will love His creation. The sign of the love of Allah is loving his creation not because of the creation but because of allah this is a very deep you know point it's not even for them if i am good to you this brother here ihsan if i am good to him and i love him for the sake of allah it's not because it's you well it doesn't it's not because i want to make you happy for the sake of making you happy it's not because it's really because i want to make allah happy and that's why the moment allah says that i should stop loving you then I have to stop loving you because I wasn't loving you for the sake of loving you, it was for the sake of loving Allah. And that's why the hadith says that Hubbu fillah wal bughdu fillah. Love for the sake of Allah, dislike for the sake of Allah. So even when we are good to people, it's not even to make them happy, it's to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. It's for the pleasure of Allah, for the sake of Allah. Everything we do, when we are uh, gathering money, we are you know, um, helping and supporting. And fundraising is taking place for those orphans and widows suffering in Bangladesh. Whether you've been to Bangladesh or you've never been. Whether you know what's going on there or you don't know what's going on there. Whether wherever side, whatever side of the fence you, know, you sit at or whatever, whatever you've heard. Widows and orphans, the creation of Allah. They need our help and support and assistance. And we are charitable towards them. Not for their sake, but for the sake of Allah. Because Allah has obligated us to love them so this is this is what i will end on inshallah the summary is this is a quality this is an attribute this was a actually a character trait of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we need to bring into our lives inshallah which is compassion and love for the creation of allah may allah grant us tawfiq I'm going to end with this inshallah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.